Good morning. We welcome you to St. James, and we are glad that each and every one of you are here with us on this Pentecost Sunday. Hopefully, as you came into the sanctuary today, you received a copy of our worship bulletin. On the back of the bulletin, there's a calendar and some announcements of upcoming ministry opportunities. Uh, hopefully, uh, you will take note of those. One is, that is not printed there is if you have not had a chance to uh, purchase carnations for Father's Day, Father's Day will be next Sunday, so today is the last day to do that. There will be some people in the narthex at the end of the service today, and you'll have an opportunity. The uh, stems are $4 uh, each uh, for whoever you would like to have remembered or honored uh, next Sunday. There is a special announcement there about our summer singers. If you do not normally participate in one of our adult uh, singing groups, perhaps the summer is a great time for you to experiment or try that out. Uh, beginning in July, they will meet at 1015 to rehearse whatever they're gonna sing in the 1055 service that day. If you can come one Sunday, come join them for one Sunday. If you can come all the Sundays until uh, they uh, stop that series in August, uh, you're invited to do that. If you have any questions about that, you can contact uh, Michael uh, either by calling him or emailing him in the church office. The dates for our summer community food trucks are printed there as well. I hope you will note those and uh, use this as an opportunity to invite others who might be interested in the ministry of St. James to come out and meet some of our members and hear about our ministries. This time I'd like to invite you to stand and greet one another in the peace of Jesus Christ. As you make your way back to your seats, if you're worshiping with us as a guest today and would like to know about more of the ministries of St. James or how you can become a part of St. James, there are some orange cards in the pew racks. You can fill one of those out, hand them to one of the pastors after the service, or put them in the offering plate, and we'd be glad to get in touch with you and let you know how you can become more a part of St. James. Uh, one caveat as we continue to worship, it is Pentecost Sunday today, and uh, you never know exactly what's going to happen at Pentecost, so you have to stay awake for the whole service today. Uh, we are glad you're here, uh, you are here as we remember the gift of God's Spirit falling anew on the church. I want to invite you to a few moments of silence as we pray for God's Spirit to fall anew on us in this place. Good morning. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship that is in your bulletin. Come, Holy Spirit, ignite our hearts with joy and confidence. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us today. Help us to boldly proclaim.
Christ risen. Amen. Please remain standing for the hymn on Pentecost they gathered, which is printed in your bulletin. May be seated and as you are I invite our children to come forward for a few moments with Dr. Aaron. Happy Pentecost, everyone. Can you say Happy Pentecost? Did you know this is a really big holiday? Today is the day of Pentecost, and it's kind of a strange celebration. What do you see different in the sanctuary? Red. There's red everywhere. Even some of our people are in red. Good job, people wearing red. And look, our table's wearing red. And the candle. Why do you think there are candles burning? You do? Because of the um, uh, flames in the disciples' story. The flames, that's right. Our story today is about the day of Pentecost when everyone was a little sad because they didn't know what to do after Jesus died. Some of them have, had gotten to talk to him even after he died, but they were kind of sad because they really missed him. And then one day they were all together and a wind started blowing through the house that seemed like a tornado was coming. Can you imagine what that would feel like? 
It'd be kind of scary. Yeah. But suddenly, everyone in the room started talking in everybody else's language. Can you imagine that? If you could all of a sudden speak in every other language and everything that you said could be understood by other people, that would be pretty special, right? So what they realized at that moment was that Jesus, who had been with them to show them what God was like, and God, who had created them to be who they are, was with them even when they couldn't see him. The Spirit of God was there the whole time. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, do you remember what happened? A wind from God came, blew across the face of the water. Can you feel the breath in your body? Do you think you have that same spirit in you? I think that spirit is with us today, even like it was with the disciples thousands of years ago, and even like it was in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. So let's say a prayer to God and thank God for this Holy Spirit. Can we thank God? Dear God, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being there in the beginning. Thank you for being there in Jesus Christ. And thank you for being with us in our breath. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, if you'd like to come to worship and play, we'll line up over there, or you can go back and sit with your moms and dads. As our children make their ways to their next spots, I want to draw your attention to the list of concerns uh, here in this community. As always, if there is anything that you would like to lift up in prayer, all you need to do is connect with one of the clergy or call the church office, and we'd be sure to put that concern on the list to be lifted up in prayer uh, together. This morning, we remember Ann Barron, Tricia Evans, Jerry Malamog, Lawrence Montgomery, Wayne Polk, Monty Shackelford, and Anne Wadley. We extend sympathy to the family of Emily Moon, whose Aunt Anita Wildman died last week, as well as sympathy to the family of Linda Newton, who died on Friday. We also want to remember Connie Sudlow, uh, Connie's son Robert. Uh, we want to remember Robert. He is currently at the Emory Transplant Center. In addition to these concerns, we want to give God thanks for all of the work that was done all around Atlanta uh, yesterday for the great day of service and, and all of the ways that uh, we were able to, to celebrate God's presence among us through those mission projects, as well as remembering to pray for our delegation to uh, the North Georgia Annual Conference. This week, United Methodists from all over North Georgia are going to gather in Athens to talk about issues of the church and to make decisions for how we will be the church in and for the world. Uh, we have several of our laity here as well as clergy from St. James that are going to be in Athens to do that important work. And so we remember all those who will be gathered in Athens this week. Let us now go to God together in prayer as we sing together the call to prayer. It's printed in your bulletin, Spirit of the Living God. Holy Spirit, 
Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your love. Open our eyes to see the presence of God all around us in the stillness of this sacred space, in the busyness and noise of our city streets, in the joys and celebrations of our lives, and in the tragedies and struggles that break our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and comfort those who grieve. Grant them the peace that only you can bring. Stir within us a trust in life beyond the death as we ponder the mysteries of Christ's resurrection and the hope we have in new and everlasting life. Come, Holy Spirit, and bring wholeness to the sick. Strengthen those who are weak. Heal the wounded and broken. Give rest to the weary. Come, Holy Spirit, and inspire our warring world to seek peace to love our enemies, to put away our weapons, to remember the price paid for our freedom, and to care for those who have served. Come, Holy Spirit, and ignite a fire in our bones, a passion for justice that cannot be quenched until all of your children are loved, until no one is marginalized or oppressed, until everyone has the opportunity to thrive, until the world is transformed and renewed. Come, Holy Spirit, and revive your church. Liberate us from complacency and apathy. Inspire us with Christ's vision for a world reborn. Help us to recognize our gifts for ministry and to use them in service of others. Transform our hearts and our minds and fill us with love that overflows. Remind us that there is no greater calling than to love you with all that we are and to love our neighbors as ourselves. We pray especially this morning for your spirit to guide and direct our decisions, the way we speak to and about our brothers and sisters in Christ and our actions as we gather for annual conference this week. We pray that you will be with those who represent this local congregation as well as all of those who gather in your name. Gracious God, give us a glimpse of your kingdom emerging around us and drawing us into the new things you are doing in this world. And give us the courage to join in the strength to be your light here in this world. It is for your kingdom that we now pray, filled with your spirit, using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, as a people who have been filled with the Spirit, let us stand to affirm our faith with the modern affirmation, which can be found on page 885. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, the gift of God, the Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen.
You may be seated. And now, as the ushers come forward, I invite you to place your visitor card, if you have one, or your prayer request in the offering plates as they are passed. Let us pray. God of all goodness, take these gifts and these offerings and let them be used so that we might spread the spirit throughout the world. Amen.
please remain standing for the epistle lesson from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. It can be found in your pew Bible on page 144 in the New Testament section. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we each hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all the, who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men will see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall turn to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now when the day of Pentecost had arrived, a strange and bizarre things started to take place in Jerusalem. But what is Pentecost? What was expected to happen that day? And what is it that happened that amazed and perplexed the crowds? Twice in the 21 verses that Anna just read, we're told that they are amazed, confused, perplexed. Pentecost began in the days of Moses, and back in Deuteronomy chapter 16, it is referred to as the Feast of Weeks, because it was to be celebrated 50 days after Passover. Count seven sets of weeks, seven sets of seven, and add one day, Moses is commanded, and on that day the Israelites shall have a harvest festival. Following the dating of Passover, this festival would have come sometime in May or June, which in Israel was the time of the spring harvest, the beginning of the spring wheat harvest. And the Israelites are asked to set aside a portion of that initial harvest to bring as an offering to God. It was a sign of thanksgiving, acknowledging that God was seen as their provider, having given the rain to fertilize the field and to allow the seed to grow. But it was also a sign of faith 
to live in an agricultural, agrarian society where you're dependent upon the rhythm of planting and harvesting and to be willing to take even a portion of your initial harvest and offer it, to give it away, is a sign of great faith. You don't know whether storms will come and destroy the remaining crop. You don't know if a drought will come and dry up the remaining wheat. You don't know if invading armies will come and terrorize the land. So to be willing to give even a portion of your harvest, your initial harvest, was seen as a sign of great faith and thanksgiving. Over the years, as Israelites were taken to different lands and some began to settle in different parts of the world, they lost touch with some of this agricultural setting for the Feast of Weeks. In some parts of the world, it was only time to plant. It wasn't yet time to harvest when the festival would roll around. In others, it was time for the land to lay fallow, waiting for the spring rains to arrive. So the rabbis began to interpret this festival as a time to celebrate the harvest of God's teachings. It was a time of thanksgiving for the Torah, the words that God had shared with Moses on Mount Sinai, a lot of what fills up the first five books of our Bible. And the rabbis taught that this was the initial teaching. This was the initial harvest of living in right relationship with God. And we should come together for a time in dedicated meditation and study of God's teaching. It was about this same time that the term Pentecost was beginning to be used for this festival. In those days, Greek was the most common language in the world. And as Jews lived in different countries all over the world, it became the language they would use to identify their common festivals. The word Pentecost comes from the Greek language and it means literally the 50th, the 50th day past Passover. Going back to that original instruction to Moses, count seven sets of weeks and then on the next day, begin your festival of harvest and thanksgiving. This was the Passover that was being celebrated in the days of Jesus and his disciples. This particular Passover in Acts chapter 2 is the Passover that happens 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. Ten days after Jesus ascends back into heaven, and as he is ascending, says to the disciples, go to Jerusalem and wait there until the promise of the Holy Spirit descends upon you. He didn't say it would happen at Pentecost. He didn't say when it would happen. He just said that they were to go and to wait there. But when the day of Pentecost arrived, as some were gathering to bring their grain harvest to the temple, perhaps residents of Galilee and Judea who lived close by, who could bring a portion of their harvest and offer it to the Lord. As others, maybe the residents of Pamphylia and Cyre the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene were coming to spend time with the rabbis studying the Torah. And perhaps while others from Crete and Pontus were just spending time meditating on some of the commandments given to Moses. On this Pentecost, there is suddenly the sound of a strong wind. And some of the residents of Pamphylia probably ran out in the streets looking to see if a tornado was about to take down the city. And then flames as of fire descended upon the disciples gathered there in Jerusalem and others probably from Crete and from Libya came running out to see if the city 
was about to be burned down. And then it happened. Then the great miracle happened. The disciples began to speak, but they began to praise God and to witness to Christ in languages of those other countries. And those from Parthia heard them speaking in Parthian, and those from Crete heard them speaking in Greek, and those from the other parts of Mesopotamia began to hear them speaking in their own native language. And they said, but wait, aren't these those Galileans? Aren't these those simple fishermen, the tax collectors, the farmers who were following Jesus? How is it that they are able now to speak to us each in our own language? You notice as Anna was reading the scripture how many times it specified each, each, each. They heard in their own tongue. They heard the disciples speaking in languages that were not studied, not learned before. But they heard and understood them witnessing to Jesus Christ. People asked, what does this mean? What's going on here? And some even jeered, oh, these are drunk. They've just been drinking a little too much. I, I love the beginning of Peter's sermon. It's probably one of the best sermon introductions I've ever heard. They're not drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. I don't know how Peter would have begun at 5 p.m., but that's his beginning on this Pentecost. They're, they're not drunk, it's just 9 a.m. There's not a day, a Pentecost day that goes by when the scripture is read, when I don't stop and ask myself, when is the last time the church has done something so remarkable? so amazing, so astounding to the world that the best possible explanation they can come up with is, oh, they're just drunk. Wouldn't you like to be a part of a church like that? Throughout our history, throughout the centuries, the church has on this day tried to incorporate special acts of worship to remind us of the unexpected movement of God's Spirit. Early on, the use of red in worship on this day was incorporated to remember the, the spirit descending like flames of fire. In the early Middle Ages, it was common in Europe to just cover the sanctuary with red roses on Pentecost. The use of Different candles has been used across the years to represent the people who came from different parts of the world and understood the spirits speaking to them in their native languages. I was reading this week and I remember years ago being in Europe and, and some of the older churches that have more of a, a round shape to them, especially in their ceiling, seeing up at the top what I wasn't sure if it was just a design or if it was an actual hole there. And what I learned was in many places that was an actual hole. And on Pentecost, when Acts chapter 2 was read and it was describing the descent of the Spirit, they would often take a symbol of a dove and lower it down into the congregation to remind them that God's Spirit was still falling on the church and on each believer and empowering each one to go forth in ministry. This is what Jesus promised. Go and wait until the Spirit descends. And then you, each of you, will be empowered in some way to carry on the ministry that I have set in motion during my lifetime. And it will amaze and astound the world. 
Last summer, after moving here to St. James, Anna Orr and I discovered that we have a mutual friend. He was once her pastor, and he has been one of my mentors for over 25 years now. In reading this passage over and over again this week, I remembered a story that Bishop Willimon recently shared. He was talking about, well, he was bishop in North Alabama. He was sitting in a cabinet meeting one day, and one of the district superintendents came to tell him a story about what had happened in this new church. The congregation was about five years old, started one of the small towns in North Alabama. They didn't have many large contributors in that congregation, and they were meeting in rented storefront in a strip mall. But they had a dream of having their own property and being able to build their own sanctuary or to convert a space into their own worship space. And so each week, they would set aside a portion of their offering to go to their building fund. They'd been doing that for about two and a half years, and one Sunday morning, as they gathered in worship when they got to their prayer time, a father of one of the very active families in that congregation stood up and said, I need the church to pray for our family. They were fostering about three children at the time and had just been approached by the Department of Family Services to take in two more children. They could not find anywhere else where the children would be accepted and loved, and they just thought this family provided the nice, right environment that these children needed. And the father said, we just, we don't have room in our current home. We don't know what to do. We feel called to do this, but we don't have the means. And I just want to ask the church to pray for us. And before he sat down, the matriarch of that community stood up and said, we don't have to pray. We have $40,000 in the bank for a building fund. What if we help this family who is so much a part of us build out their home? What if we promise to help them nurture these children and to help provide a community of love and support for them and all of these children? And without taking a vote, the congregation simply agreed to turn over their funds and to help expand this family's home and to help them take in extra children. And Bishop Willimon said, you know, when that story was shared around the cabinet, you know what we said? The bishop and district superintendents gathered there. Are these people drunk? What are they thinking? Turn over $40,000 like that? And one, one of the newest cabinet members, one of the youngest members in the room said, no, no. This is what Joel was talking about. It will be in the last days that your young will dream dreams and your old will see visions. For my spirit will fall upon all flesh and all flesh can be saved and all flesh can take part in the ministry of Christ. O oh Lord, let it be. Amen. The altar is open if you'd like to come forward and spend a few moments in prayer as we all stand and sing together our closing hymn, hymn number 539, O Spirit of the Living God.
As you go forth today, remember Pentecost is not over. Your pastors have a special treat to uh, share with you on your way out to remind you of the promise of God's spirit to each and every one of you. It should be available on the portico, assuming it's not flooding out there. Uh, so I hope you will check that out before you leave today. But most importantly, I hope you go forth knowing that the spirit of God, the love of Christ, and God's own presence goes with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.